Hello students, how are you doing? And today we will be talking about uh, heat shock protein or uh, simply known as HSPs. You probably heard this name a lot uh, in cell biology, molecular biology and different books and you have a little bit of confusion that why they are called heat shock proteins uh, if they are, uh, I mean they have different functionality. So let us look at uh, why they are called heat shock proteins and what are actually heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins are, uh, you know, quote unquote, they are a uh, variety of proteins. Uh, there are protein series actually that are present or found in each and every living organism in planet Earth. That's true because heat shock protein is found in bacteria, it is found in us human being, it is found in every single living organism actually. So the term is misleading though, heat shock protein, that's what I'm telling you. Uh, it means simply uh, that this protein is developed if the cell is in the stress of heat, right? Now, this is not completely true here. Uh, it's, it is completely true, but there is something missing out there. The thing is, the heat shock protein is a type of protein that is developed and upregulated inside a cell if the cell is undergoing a huge stress, right? So the thing here, let's say this is a cell, and we put this cell in a stressful condition. In that stressful condition, the cells start to produce a lot of proteins inside the red colored proteins that are drawn here. Those will be called as the heat shock proteins due to the introduction of stress right inside the cell. So the stress here according to this name is heat but actually the stress can be anything. Any kind of stress, cellular stress, whatever things cell don't find a very good condition to be in, the hostile conditions. For example, the stress can be one thing is the heat, obviously there is a heat, so, so heat can be a stress, cold is also a stress, UV radiation is another stress, osmolarity, change in osmolarity is another condition, acidic or high, uh, I mean basic acidic or basic condition, high uh, change in pH, all of these conditions, there are many more, all of these conditions can be de designated as uh, the stress for a cell to live. Because for a proper growth and division, cell requires a temperature, right, as well as osmolarity, as well as pH balance for, for the living. But in this case, if there is any change in the environmental factors, the cell is undergoing stress and in those conditions, they start producing these proteins, different bunch of proteins. Those proteins have a functionality to control what's going on inside the cell. Actually, why is cell doing that? What is the problem in this high temperature or cold temperature or osmolarity or UV radiation? In all these cases, what's happening actually, the protein synthesis inside the cell either can be halted or whether the protein is synthesized, the proteins cannot be folded properly. Because remember, all of these things are important for a protein to properly fold. And if its protein is not folding properly, that means the protein will not have a proper functionality. And in that case, the protein will be worthless, it will be misfolded, and the cell will die after a few minutes, after a few time or so. So to prevent that thing, the cell need to make sure that the protein folds properly. How can a cell do that? And for that reason, they produce the specialized crop proteins, the HSP protein, heat shock proteins. They are termed as heat shock because at the very beginning, they are discovered as a response of heat stress. That's why they are called heat shock proteins. So once all those heat shock proteins are produced, those heat shock protein pr proteins having a function of two different functions. One, actually first thing is to check whether the protein is folded properly or not inside the cell. If it is folded, it is, if it is misfolded, but it can be folded with a simple little help, then in that case, the help, the helps in the protein folding. And in that case, the functionality played by these HSPs are termed as chaperone. So the protein which helps in the protein to fold properly among those HSP they are called chaperones. So chaperone, chaperones are a type of HSP or heat shock protein that help other protein to fold properly. Now if the protein is misfolded so much 
that it cannot be revived, it can, cannot be properly folded again. In that case, the HSP can also degrade that protein or in that protein to be degraded by the cellular proteasome complex or protein degradation complex. And for those type of cases, so this is a protein degradation. So cell need to decide that whether they need to keep that protein or break it down. And both of the tasks are provided by HSPs. Now, when HSP is performing the protein degradation, the type of HSP we see here is very small. And one of the smallest HSP with only 8 kilo Dalton molecular weight. Can you imagine? Very, very small protein. That protein here is termed as ubiquitin. And as you look at the name, ubiquitin means it is ubiquitous. That means it is present in all variety of cells. And this ubiquitin will be added to that protein to be destructed. And that protein will be guided to the proteasome. That protein will be chopped and destroyed. So both of the tasks are provided by the HSP proteins. Right? Now if you look at the HSP protein, the common functionality, whether it's a heat shock protein or cold shock protein or whatever, all of them are uh, around this heat shock protein zone. Now all those proteins, they have a common feature. They're not very big. They're smaller or moderate length proteins. And they have a very close molecular weights. Like some of them have molecular weights of 60 kilo Dalton. Some of them have 70 kilo Dalton. Some of them have 80 kilo Dalton molecular weight. And according to their molecular weight, we actually name them. For example, we have an HSP with 60 kD weight, so we call it HSP 60, or the 71, HSP 70, and HSP 80, because that has 80 kilo Dalton molecular weight. Now, in that case, HSP 80 is the most studied uh, heat shock protein that are available. So it is found in everywhere. It is found in bacteria. It's found in eukaryotes and all these things. Okay. Now, uh, now the question is how HSP sense, I mean, the remarkable thing about the cell in the stress response is that when there is this all this kind of stress, the cell upregulate, upregulate the synthesis of HSP proteins. Though they are regular synthesis of this ubiquitin and all these molecules because they are housekeeping genes present inside the cell, so they are we, they keep on synthesizing these proteins uh, again and again. But during the time of stress, they start synthesizing HSPs more and more. Even it, it increases 20 or 20, 50 times more HSP proteins production than the previous times. So how this HSP production is uplifted, upregulated, that is a remarkable thing and that is a question to answer. To answer this question, what we know, if any of these stress conditions are present, let's take one stress here as a heat. So in these cases, if this is a stressed condition, in, in a scenario is that if we draw this cell, let's say this is the inner cell membrane, this is the outer cell membrane, outer cell membrane, this is the inner cell membrane, and this is uh, in between this outer inner membrane, this is the, let's say, this is the intracellular space. Okay. This is the scenario. This is outside the cell. Let me write. This is out. This is in. Now, what is going on inside here in the cytosol actually? Those proteins that are produced and they are not properly folded, for example. Now, the protein here that is produced is not properly folded and that protein is an outer membrane protein. So, outer membrane protein, OM, outer membrane protein. So, that protein should be traveled properly to this outer membrane and should be embedded to the outer membrane or outer cell membrane. But the thing here, as it is malfunctioned, as it is misfolded, the functionality of the outer membrane will not be properly maintained. And instead of embedding itself to the outer membrane, it cannot even go there. Instead, it starts to store itself in the intracellular space. Right? In the intracellular space. So once this outer membrane protein starts to store in the intracellular space, that is a bad sign. Because this outer membrane protein provides a signal to the inner cell membrane protein. And the example of such protein is, let's say this one. The example is 
big S. Yes, this is one, one of the name of the protein. This is the inner membrane protein. They provide the signal to this big S that something is wrong going on. That's why we have accumulation of proteins in this intracellular space. We should not have any proteins in this intracellular space. So that signal triggers the activation of another protein called sigma factor E. Remember, sigma factor is a transcription factor. So this sigma factor E is slightly variant and this factor is also termed as heat shock factor, HSF. There are many different types of heat shock factors available in cell, but this is one of the heat shock factors. Once sigma E is activated, usually there are different types of sigma in the genuine normal transcription process. But once sigma E is activated, that means there is something wrong going on. And this sigma E will selectively transcribe HSP protein genes more and more. So, they will produce more HSP. They will actually transcribe more HSP where we produce more HSP proteins. That's how we have a higher accumulation of HSP inside the cell. This is one of the theories of how HSP actually uh, HSP production, HSP expression is uplifted or upgraded uh, by the presence of the stress, right? Because heat or cold or pH change ultimately destroys uh, the uh, or the complete setup of protein folding. It actually destroys the environmental factors. Uh, it is against uh, the feature of protein folding. That's why protein folding is halted. And if it is halted, it will provide a signal somehow. This is one way of providing the signal. But if the homeostasis is imbalanced, in that case, this way they produce HSP to take care of the situation. Okay, so that's it guys. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button because that's how we keep growing. And to get more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment the video, as well as share it with your friends. Share a lot. Okay, so thank you.